Are you aware that health care is one of the top 10 causes of death in this country? An article published by Dr. John T. James in the September 2013 Journal of Patient Safety concluded that over 400,000 Americans die each year as a consequence of mistakes in their medical care. This analysis would make health care the third largest cause of death in this country. Back in 2000, Dr. Barbara Starfield published in the Journal of the American Medical Association an estimate of 225,000 deaths per year from medical errors. It would appear that things got worse rather than better between 2000 and 2013. My colleagues who are not involved in the delivery of medical care find it unbelievable that health care could even come close to being among the top 10 causes of death, much less third on the list. The topic of patient safety in medicine has considerable importance to society as a whole and the specialty of anesthesiology takes pride in its leadership role in making significant, dramatic, documented strides in reducing mortality and morbidity associated with medical care. We have intended this video for physicians and nurses in training in the science of anesthesiology, the next generation of stewards of the specialty. While we celebrate the patient safety accomplishments within this specialty, we also know that significant opportunities for improvement still exist. This presentation springs from the work of individuals both in and outside of healthcare and was assembled here by Dr. Richard Griffith, a retired anesthesiologist. Dr. Griffith has a background not only in clinical practice and teaching, but also in engineering and medical device manufacturing. My career background, on the other hand, lies in teaching chemistry at the university level, and I played the role of a detached critic in the process that created this video. I have the pleasure of being the presenter for the team, but the content definitely arises from collaboration. I do hope you will allow me to speak here as a temporarily adopted member of the anesthesia community. I certainly speak as a friend. I have come to appreciate the key role anesthesia providers play in the safety and efficacy of virtually every sphere of complex interventional medical therapy. The general public, I find, often does not sufficiently recognize the importance of this specialty. Students of anesthesia practice commonly expect their faculty to teach them how practitioners currently manage various situations that present in their work. While I refer to some of the current practices, I would like you to understand from the beginning that my objective here in this video goes beyond the current practice model. I hope to give you both a perspective and a couple of practical tools that just might allow you to do a better job throughout your career with regard to patient safety, better than current practitioners have done in general over the last decade. Yes, I know that's certainly a very lofty goal. So I'm asking you to listen, to listen actively to what I have to say and decide for yourself if I measure up to that standard. Let's start with the current path to anesthesia quality care with which you have a familiarity, the m and Conference. Every month you meet with all of your colleagues, well, all except for those working the night shift or those rotating outside the hospital or those who are on vacation. You meet to discuss patient mishaps and complications with the discussion usually being led by a senior anesthesiologist. I expect you find these meetings difficult and rewarding all at the same time. Most participants find M&M conferences very uncomfortable as they see how easily a case can go from routine to disaster and they can readily imagine themselves struggling to sort out the various issues in the case under discussion. 
The phrase from John Bradford, the 16th century Christian martyr, usually comes to mind, there but for the grace of God go I. The M&M conference has become a quality improvement tradition in healthcare. It makes sense to learn from others' mistakes. These conferences take place in all specialties, in all hospitals throughout our land, and yet, as I pointed out at the beginning of this video, the number of mishaps appears to continue to grow. Why is this? Is it simply due to the nature of human beings? Is medicine somehow unique in its complexity? We are certainly aware that many other human endeavors, even ones with apparently greater complexity, appear to have found ways to reduce errors. Aviation is one industry that immediately jumps to mind. A great many articles in our literature attest to the benefits to surgery and anesthesiology afforded by the Time Out Protocol, borrowed from the pre-flight checklist used in aviation. We religiously use that checklist to improve safety in the operating room. Is that enough? Is the m and conference being used as effectively as it might be in order to foster quality improvement? If you see the m and conference as a forum for using outcomes to feed back a need for improvement to the process, the answer would be yes. Quality systems, in general, use complaints and other measures of process outcome to guide improvements. However, let me repeat that however for emphasis. I am about to argue that the m and conference fails as a tool for fostering quality improvement. Here's the failing. The mission of the m and conference lies in teaching practitioners lessons that will change their behavior in order to produce better clinical outcomes. That mission concept falls short. It doesn't work. I can't sugarcoat this. Experts in quality have understood for many decades that one simply cannot create highly reliable performance through training and teaching alone. Healthcare has been relying on a defective tool and I am calling on you, today's students, especially in anesthesiology, to change that. So what does work and how do we go about changing? I want to focus your attention on two pretty simple concepts. First concept, a forcing function. In the design arena, a forcing function is commonly defined as a design that prevents the user from taking an action without consciously considering information relevant to that action. In our context, this would mean a change in the work practice that prevents, ideally that physically prevents, the medical mistake from happening. When you sit in your next m and conference, I want you to ask yourself if there could possibly exist a forcing function that would prevent the medical mistake under discussion from ever happening again. The design of the anesthesia machine's flow meters to mechanically prevent the delivery of a gas mixture with less than 21% oxygen represents an example of a forcing function that has saved countless lives. The elimination of reusable spinal needles might be viewed as a forcing function, just as would the removal of a concentrated potassium solution from operating rooms. All of these changes have saved lives. The key systems for loading gas cylinders and for refilling vaporizers prevent mistakes and constitute additional examples of clinical forcing functions. Finding a forcing function may prove difficult or even impossible for every clinical mishap. But I would argue that if you are not looking for a forcing function, you will certainly never find one. The search for a forcing function starts by isolating the root causes of the mishap, listing them or diagramming them, and then asking one by one if it would be possible to block or eliminate or totally remove 
any one of the causal elements or steps. Second concept. Can I make this mishap less likely by putting information into the world instead of trying to put it into everyone's head through training? To benefit from training requires memory, while building information into the environment replaces the need for human memory with something more reliable, something less prone to distraction, perhaps. The phrase, putting information into the world, comes from the writings of Donald Norman, a pioneer in product design strategies who played a leadership role in the design of the user interface for electronic products from Apple. Let me illustrate putting information into the world with an example. Every anesthesia provider knows that you never sedate or induce a patient without having suction immediately available for clearing an airway. However, experienced anesthetists will almost universally admit that they have experienced that in their practice. Fortunately, the error rarely causes a problem, but it happens so very easily. Perhaps you have checked your machine and suction, but while you are out of the room, the staff moves your anesthesia machine to arrange other equipment and the suction becomes disconnected. There are many possible paths to this mistake. How could we make certain that suction is always available? It would be feasible to create a forcing function for suction. Presence of suction could be required in order to physically turn on the power to the anesthesia machine. But clearly, such a forcing function would create a whole new set of more lethal hazards for patients. Instead, we might ask if we could put the awareness of working suction more prominently into the world. Of course we can. We could design a relatively simple holder for a Yankauer suction handle that would display an obvious, prominent red warning without suction and a green signal with active suction. Such a holder attached up front on the anesthesia machine would make it always obvious if anything has interrupted the availability of suction during the course of the anesthetic care. The anesthetist no longer has to actively check the suction. The suction makes its status readily apparent. That's what we mean by putting information into the world or into the environment. I think you now have two powerful, simple concepts to take with you to every M&M conference. If you are always looking for forcing functions, and for ways to put information into the world, you have a much better chance of actually making reliable, lasting improvements in outcome. Such changes create a new workflow to reduce errors, one that does not depend upon someone remembering to do something. When you make such a change, even the anesthetists who missed the M&M meeting can do a better job for their patients. Creating a diagram or drawing of the elements that contributed to the mishap seems to help one see a new possibility for a different workflow. Doodling in that way during the M&M conference probably should be encouraged because it definitely leads to focus and creativity. I would love to see M&M moderators routinely ask the participants in the meeting if anyone can see a forcing function or a process change that would reduce the chance of future mishaps. Institutions select the best and brightest for training in health sciences. But unfortunately, a bright mind can still make mistakes. Please try to use your bright mind to find ways to make mistakes impossible or as close to impossible as possible. Training alone will not get us to the level of safety and reliability we all desire. I would add that checklists, like the timeout, constitute one way of putting information into the world. The aviation industry actually has checklists unique to each aircraft model for every alarm and emergency condition they can imagine a pilot might encounter in flight. In a similar way, 
anesthesiologists have proposed the crowdsourcing of tips and guides for each procedure as it is uniquely performed by specific surgeons in specific institutions in order to put information or tips for better outcomes into the world. A printed care print for each case, annotated by the anesthesia team during that case, would also serve as a structure for an orderly turnover if the team must be relieved at some point. Experts commonly identify the turnover of care process as a major factor in medical errors. The care print concept has not caught on broadly, but you can investigate it further by searching for care prints on the internet. I hope that I have made these two concepts, forcing functions and putting information into the world, clear to you, and that you can and will start using them as you participate in your next M&M conference. I would point you to Donald Norman's popular design books if you wish to pursue a deeper understanding of the power of these concepts. Let's get healthcare out of the top 10 causes of death in the United States. Mm -hmm.